From detecting the largest ever quake on Mars to a fossil of a pregnant ichthyosaur found in Chile. These are some of the stories that we talk about on this episode of Scientifix. I am Mohana Basu and every week on The Prince Scientifix, I take you through some of the top science stories of the week from across the globe. NASA's InSight Mars lander has detected the largest quake ever observed on another planet. An estimated magnitude 5 tremor occurred on May 4, 2022, the 1222nd Martian day of the mission. This adds to the catalogue of more than 1,313 quakes InSight has de detected since landing on Mars in November 2018. The largest previously recorded quake was estimated magnitude 4.2 detected in August 25 last year. InSight was sent to Mars with a highly sensitive seismometer to study the deep interior of the planet. As seismic waves pass through or reflect off material in Mars' crust, mantle and core, they change in ways that seismologists can study to determine the depth and composition of these layers. What scientists learn about the structure of Mars can help them better understand the formation of all rocky worlds, including Earth and its moon. A magnitude 5 quake is a medium-sized quake compared to those felt on Earth, but it's close to the upper limit of what scientists had hoped to see on Mars during InSight's mission. Meanwhile, scientists at the Chinese Academy of Sciences have found evidence that water was present on Mars more recently than thought. Earlier studies have suggested that parts of the Martian surface were covered with water up until approximately 3 billion years ago. The time since the water dried up on Mars is known as the Amazonia period. Data from the Chinese rover Zhurong indicates that water on Mars might have persisted longer than has been thought. Zhurong has been travelling around in an impact crater on the Martian surface for approximately a year analyzing rocks. The researchers compared the signatures they found in the rocks on Mars with rocks on Earth, finding that some of the rocks are hydrated minerals, that is minerals containing water. They also found instances of layers of dewy crust consisting of a hardened accumulation of silica, alumina and iron oxide that would have required a large amount of water either rising from below the surface or from a large quantity of melting ice. The researchers suggest that water must have persisted on Mars longer than has been thought to account for the hydrated minerals on its surface, perhaps much longer. They also suggest that the existence of such rocks on the surface hints at the possibility of ground ice. Also this week, scientists have successfully been able to revive light-sensing neuron cells in organ donor eyes and restored communication between them. Neurons in the central nervous system transmit sensory information as electrical signals. In the eye, specialized neurons known as photoreceptors sense light. Researchers at the University of Utah and Scripps Research use the retina as a model of the central nervous system to investigate how neurons die and found new methods to revive them. They were able to wake up photoreceptor cells in the human macula, which is the part of the retina responsible for our central vision and our ability to see fine detail and color. In eyes obtained up to five hours after an organ donor's death, these cells responded to bright light, colored lights, and even very dim flashes of light. While initial experiments revived the photoreceptors, the cells appear to have lost their ability to communicate with other cells in the retina. The team identified oxygen deprivation as the critical factor leading to this loss of communication. To overcome the challenge, the team procured organ donor eyes in under 20 minutes from the time of death and designed a special transportation unit to restore oxygenation and other nutrients to the organ donor's eyes. They also built a device to stimulate the retina and measure the electrical activity of its cells. With this approach, the team was able to restore a specific electrical signal seen in living eyes known as the B-wave. It is the first B-wave recording made from a central retina of a post-mortem human eye. 
Also this week, scientists have discovered six new species of frog the size of a thumbnail in the forests of Mexico, with one earning the distinction of Mexico's smallest frog. All six species are around 15 millimeters long when fully grown. Adult males of the tiniest of these species grow to only 13 millimeters. The newly discovered species are known as direct developing frogs. Rather than hatching from eggs into tadpoles like most frogs, they emerge from the eggs as perfect miniature frogs. And they are so small that they are right at the bottom of the forest food chain. These frogs live in the dark, humid leaf litter of forests, so there's still much to learn about how they socialize or how they breed. The study involved gathering almost 500 frog specimens from museums around the world, which had been collected in Mexico and using new methods to categorize the relationships between them. Using DNA sequencing, the team sorted the frogs into groups based on how similar their genes were. Then, CT scanning was used to create 3D models of the frog's skeletons so that physical details could also be compared. These two very different lines of evidence revealed six new species of frogs. Meanwhile, this week, researchers have unearthed the fossilized remains of a four-meter-long pregnant female ichthyosaur nicknamed Fiona in Chile. This is Chile's first complete ichthyosaur and was unearthed from a melting glacier deep in the Patagonia area of the country. The intact remains were delicately collected using a helicopter. The ichthyosaur fossil contains several embryos that was initially discovered in 2009. The expedition to retrieve the fossil lasted an intense 31 days. The ichthyosaur is the only pregnant female of the era between 129 and 139 million years ago recorded and extracted on the planet. The excavation will help provide information on its species, on the paleobiology of embryonic development and on the, a disease that affected it during its lifetime. That's all for this week. This is Mohana Basu, Special Correspondent at The Print. If you like our work, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.